This image obviously has some problems because of the lens that we've used on it. And you can see that the bowing in the top and the bottom of the, the train station here has been caused because I've used a fisheye lens. Now, in this particular instance, it's probably not the best lens to use uh, when you're trying to photograph a train station. And quite honestly, this is a bit of a snapshot, so we weren't trying to do anything too exciting. But what is exciting is that we can actually still make some changes to this image uh, using Photoshop and it will correct depending on the lens if the camera or if the data on the JPEG is has the lens information on it. If we go up to our filter and we go down here we've got a thing called lens correction and if I click on that it'll give us a whole heap of options to be able to fix this image. Now you notice as soon as I open this up already it has actually done quite a lot of work to it because the geometric distortion is already corrected and it corrects it um, based upon the lens profiles that are in um, my Photoshop and it takes the metadata from this file and sees if there's anything in there that will work for it. You can see I've actually got two options here for lens profiles so I can see which one's going to work best for me. I can also, if I've got any chromatic aberrations or if I want to add some vignetting or take it out, we've got uh, spots in here to do it as well. And apart from having all this sort of automatic stuff happen for us, we can come into our custom area. We, we can make some additional changes. I'm just going to scale this back out a bit because I like to be able to see the entire image. And at the moment, it's not really that straight. This end is wider than this end. So I'm going to use my horizontal perspective just to straighten those up a little bit. And well, it's about right. We could also um, grab our little tool up the top here, which is a straightening tool. And I'm going to just drag, click on the edge here and then drag it across to the other side just so that I can make sure I've got that straight. Then I can see that I've still got a little bit of a problem up this end, so I'm just going to make that a little more around this side and let's just straighten that floor again. There we go. Now I'm pretty happy with that. That gives me all the information that I need for this image. I can now, if I want to, scale that back up a bit. Um, I'm actually going to leave it so I can see the majority of it and crop it in Photoshop instead. If I could see that there were still some issues in here, I could also go in and make a few changes to this. But um, I'm pretty happy with the way that that's done it. So we click on OK. We can now, if I just drop a couple of rulers down onto here, I can actually see that most of these areas are fairly straight and fairly much in line as to how they should be. So the profile that's been created for this image is quite amazing in the way that it's actually um, rearranged the pixels to straighten this image out. Um, there's other ways that we can change and move images around apart from this lens correction and that is called a warp tool and if we go up to our uh, editing area, we've got this thing called uh, transform and we can use the thing called warp. Now if we use the warp we can actually drag things up and down like so and we can also move and shift and shape and if we grab the edge we can also pull it up and over itself almost like the page is turning as well. So that's another way of moving things around not quite as easy as um, the uh, going into the lens correction. And if your data for your lens correction is in there, it makes it a very, very easy thing to do.